Today, I will show you how to generate and configure your SSH key for GitLab if you're using Windows 10. For macOS or Linux, the process is similar, but I will link you to a different tutorial for that. Let's get started. So I have this repository in GitLab and I'm just trying to essentially clone this repository, make a copy of this repository locally on my computer and make some changes to it. So one of the first things you need to do is to figure out if you already have Git installed. So essentially, if you open any terminal and you type in something like Git dash dash version and you're getting something back and not an error, as is in this case, it means that you already have Git installed. However, if you don't have Git installed, what I recommend you do is to go to git scmcom By the way, everything that I'm talking about, links or commands that I'm typing in, they will be available in the video description. So make sure you check that out. I'll also be posting updates just in case something changes. So in this case, for Windows, what you need to do is to download from here the latest version. Your operating system will be already detected. So I'm going directly to my downloads and clicking the installer. It is actually quite a long installation process and I don't want to bore you with all the details. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to leave the defaults as they are. As for most users, this is essentially everything that is needed. So if you feel that at any point there is something that you would like to have different because you know you have the know-how in that regard, Feel free to make changes, but if this is like your first time installing Git, this is like you're just getting started right now, leave the defaults as they are, as the installation process itself is already, let's say, pretty weird and pretty detailed for beginners. So finally going to install. Okay, so that's about it. One of the tools that come bundled with this installation is the so-called Git Bash. So I'm going to click here to launch Git Bash. This is like another terminal window that helps you interact with Git. Let me make this a bit larger. All right. So now we can double check again that indeed we have Git installed and you should see something like git version, whatever is the latest version. So going back to the repository that you are trying to work with, you should be able to see this button here. It's called clone. So when you're cloning it, you have essentially two options. One of them is to clone with SSH. And I'm going to explain a bit what that is. And the other one is to clone with HTTPS. Now, when you're cloning with HTTPS, what's happening is that you will be asked for your username and password. Now, when working with Git, generally with working with remote servers, we don't want to work with username and password. We want to work with SSH. SSH is a way to authenticate without exposing your username and password. SSH stands for Secure Shell and is a cryptographic protocol based on the concept of public-private keys. We're using SSH with Git because it is much easier than typing your username and password all the time. It is also a bit more secure. So what I'm going to do next is simply copy this URL, go back to git bash and write, for example, the command git clone. I'm going to paste that URL. Now, in this case, it will try to clone it by using SSH, but because it cannot find any keys, it will try still by username and password. I just wanted to show you how this looks like. So this essentially is detecting a new host and that's totally fine. It will not ask you this again if you type here, yes. And it will say here, permission denied, public key. Sometimes it may even try to do it by using HTTPS. It depends from case to case. But essentially we don't have the permission to access this repository because it's a private repository and we haven't configured or provided any credentials. So the next step would be to generate a public and a private key. So the tool that we're going to use is called SSH Keygen. And this has been already installed as you installed Git in the installation process. 
If you're getting any errors running these commands, try to restart the computer once. Sometimes in Windows, this may take a bit until everything is properly installed. Sometimes just restarting the terminal, that can also help. So I'm running this command, and this is essentially what's happening in order to generate this public-private RSA. RSA is the encryption standard that's being used. By default, it will be saved in your user folder. Mine is Valentin, and in this folder called .ssh. Sometimes you may not even see it if you're using Explorer, but it is there and then it's good to leave it there as the default path. So I'm simply going to click enter. I don't want to change that. The next step is you're going to be asked for a passphrase. So your private key can be additionally secured with a password, essentially. Now, unfortunately, setting this passphrase when using Windows is really a pain and... For simplicity reasons, I'm not going to set the passphrase, but essentially to understand the security risk, if somebody gets access to your computer, if your files are not encrypted, and they can read this private key, which will be stored here in ID underscore RSA, they can get access to your repositories without being asked for any password or anything like this. But as I mentioned, under Windows, getting this to run without you being bugged to enter a passphrase every time you do something is, I would say, way too complicated. So we are just going to skip it for now. So I'm not going to enter any passphrase. And this is going to be randomly generated for you. And this is cryptographic secret that is there. So this is essentially impossible to guess if you don't have the private key. So what has happened essentially is in this folder that you see here, there are two files that have been generated. One of them is this private key and the other one is a public key. Now, you can notice here that inside GitLab, if you don't already see this message all the time, like add your SSH key, add your SSH key, you can click it here to add your SSH key. In case you don't see it, you can go to your profile, go to settings. And from this menu on the left-hand side, you should be able to see SSH keys. And by default, you will not have any of them installed. So we are gonna copy our public key. We always share our public key with others, with servers, with GitLab. We never share our private key. As the name is telling you, a private key should be private to you. Otherwise, if you do that, and not only it will not work, but you're also exposing yourself. So I'm going to use a command. It's called cat. This will give us the contents of a specific file. So I'm going to simply go ahead, copy the path here. And I was mentioning there are essentially two files inside there. So one of them is this ID RSA. This is the private key. And the other one is ID RSA.pub. And this is the public key. This is what we are trying to add to GitLab. You can use a text editor to get to this file, but because we already have the terminal here open, we're going to use that. So what I'm going to do is simply select the entire text that you see here. Click on copy. And here inside GitLab, I'm going to paste it. I can even write here, this is for Windows 10 or whenever. It doesn't have an expiration date, so we can simply click here on Add Key. And this will be then saved, you know exactly when you created it. And of course, later on, if for some reason your SSH key has been compromised, you can go back here to your profile and click on this trash icon, and you can delete it without changing your GitLab username and password. You know, just in case something doesn't work, you can play around with this. It's absolutely fine. So now we're going back to GitLab. Let me clear this for you. And let's try again the command that allows us to clone. So git clone, and we're trying this private repository. And you will see here now the clone process has worked without any errors. I didn't have to type in any password or anything like that. So for example, if you're using an IDE, I have here Visual Studio Code. That should work more or less the same. Just in case you're not familiar with Git, using it from the terminal, that's totally understandable. 
So you can use any IDE tool and that should automatically detect Git and should be able to work with your repository without absolutely any problems. So what we can do here is, let's see, for example, you can go ahead here and clone a repository. Let me grab the address of this repository once again. Clone, I'm gonna get SSH. Now, of course, I'm being asked where to save it. Just gonna do it on the desktop right now. It doesn't really matter a lot. So now it's cloning this. And then I can look here inside to see what does this project contain? It is just a simple file, it's not much. So for example, if I decide to do a change, like add, let's say here, new file. Hello from Git. Let's save it. And here inside the version control part, I can see the files that I've changed and what I've added. And I can simply add a commit message. Added a new file. I'm gonna stage all the changes. And one of the things that you will get initially is this information regarding configuring your username and emailing it. And that's very important. Otherwise, your work colleagues will look at you very weirdly while you're committing with weird names or while you haven't set up your proper name and email address. So the commands that you need to run are the following. So you need to run here git config and specify your email. So I'm going to simply use the same terminal here. And, you know, add whatever email that you want to show up in your git commits. And additionally, the next command that you may want to run is also this like configuring your name. Typically, it is your first and last name, but use whatever works for you. Those commands will be also available in the video description for you to easy copy paste in your own configuration. So now I've added this already, so I shouldn't get any additional errors from here. So I'm going to click here again on commit. No more warnings. And what I can do is I can simply push these changes. So that's about it. So essentially, if we go back to our repository, you can see here that the new file that we added is available here. And if we're trying to see exactly who made this commit, you will see here that your name is essentially what you have configured from Git. So this is important for the Git history that you will be able to see here. I hope that everything worked as I've shown you in the tutorial and that you can now start using Git and GitLab. I would really appreciate if you would give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. See you next time, guys.